Welcome to r slash petty revenge, where OP shuts down a couple of obnoxious kids. Our next Reddit post is from a sassy janitor. I used to live in an old renovated farmhouse with one apartment upstairs and mine below that. I would have to get up for work at 3 a.m. every day. The hardworking mom upstairs worked two jobs for her very obnoxious kids. Every time she worked an overnight shift, they would throw parties and be super rowdy. Loud music, banging on the walls, and what sounded like them bouncing medicine balls on the ground. I went up several times, knocked, and told them, look, I'm not going to tell your mom or call the cops. I just want some sleep. So keep having fun, but please keep the noise down so I can wake up for work at 3. I did this several times in a week, and one time they finally told me, go F yourself, old man. I was 23. I knew my landlord, and he knew that I knew how to work on houses, so he gave me the only key to the basement where all the electrical and hot water heaters were stored. After those kids told me to go F myself, I had enough. I went downstairs, flipped off the breaker to the upstairs apartment, locked the door, and went back for a peaceful night's sleep. I woke up at 3am and turned back on the power as I left for work. Every time the parties got loud for the next two weeks, I would simply go turn off their power and enjoy a nice night's sleep. After that, there were no more parties. I think the message got through. Down in the comments, we had this story from Co Rourke. Way back in the day, I had an apartment with a neighbor that only listened to Stand by Eminem. Literally only that song for one to two hours a night on repeat. My girlfriend at the time and I had enough of asking him to turn it down, so we put our speakers up against the wall and played Ween's Push the Little Daisies and Lords of Acid Macho Man in response. He got tired of that and threw a punch at the landlord and voila, no more annoying neighbor. Our next Reddit post is from some username. I live in a college dorm on an all-female floor. I usually wear a bra if I leave the dorm building, but I'm not going to put a bra under my shirt just to walk down the hall to a bathroom. A few days ago, I left my room and walked 10 yards down the hall to the water fountain, refilled my water bottle, and went back to my room. I was wearing a white tank top and no bra. The tank top was fitted, but not see-through, so you could only see the outline of my nipples. There was a small group of people hanging out in the hall outside a few of the rooms, but I didn't think much of it, until around half an hour later when I got a knock on the door from one of the girls I'd seen in the hall. She said something to the effect of, Hey, so sorry to ask you this, but if you go out into the hall again, could you put a bra on? My boyfriend's out there and he was staring a little, so... I'm super non-confrontational, so I was like, yeah, sure, sorry about that. And for the rest of that night, anytime I left my room, I put a bra or sweater on. And that was the end of it. Or so I thought. The next day, my roommate told me that she'd overheard that girl telling a few of her friends about the incident while in the bathroom. She said the girl was making it sound like I'd been purposefully trying to seduce her boyfriend, wearing basically nothing, taking my time at the water fountain, posing to push out my tits, the whole works. When she left the bathroom, my roommate said the girl was actually acting it out at the water fountain, pretending to be me. That night, I passed the girl and some of her friends on my way to go brush my teeth. I wasn't wearing a bra, I was already wearing my pajamas. The girl looked pointedly down at my chest, and all of them started giggling. But the last straw was when the entire dorm got an email from the RA yesterday saying she'd gotten some anonymous complaints about people dressing inappropriately in the hallways and asking that we all just make sure that we keep things covered up. So here's where I got my petty little revenge. I knew that that girl's boyfriend doesn't go to college here. I also knew that due to the pandemic, we aren't allowed to have non-student slash family guests in the dorms this year. So, I used the same anonymous complaint form to issue a complaint about people bringing their off-campus boyfriends into our dorm and then not wearing a mask. Masks are mandatory in the hallways, although not frequently enforced. This morning, the RA emailed again saying that due to anonymous complaints, they'd be enforcing the no off-campus guest rule by checking IDs of unfamiliar guests to make sure they were students from then on. Really? This girl should be thanking me. If she was concerned about her boyfriend seeing the vague outline of my tits in the dorm hallways, she no longer needs to worry. OP, I thought the way the story was going was you were just going to walk out into the hallway wearing just a bra, no shirt or anything on top of it, because hey, she asked you to wear a bra, so that would be the solution, right? Our next Reddit post is from Revolution Friendly. My neighbor across the street has a big family. 
it's one of those multi-generational homes with three stories and 10 rooms. And at least 15 people live in that house. When they have family gatherings, the kids also bring their boyfriends slash girlfriends slash F buddies over, so their vehicles would take up the entire street. If you've ever lived close to a school, you know that at 3 p.m., the street is filled with parents trying to pick up their kids, so you have to park a block away. That's what it feels like sometimes. My neighbor feels that they're entitled to the parking spots in front of their home. And not just the spot directly in front, but also the six to eight spots across the street and nearby. Because yesterday, I came home to find orange cones out front on both sides of the street. So, guess what I did? I drove over four of the cones and parked, then threw all the cones on my side of the street into their yard. This morning before work, I found an invoice from that neighbor for the damaged cones, plus a polite and well-written note threatening the wellness of my vehicle. Just now, my neighbor got a visit from the local police. My wife, who was at home at the time, took pictures. I'm looking forward to seeing those pictures when I get home. And then OP posted an update. I found two of my tire valve caps missing. I quickly found replacements from two nearby vehicles. Wow, OP, it was awfully nice of them to give you written evidence that if something gets damaged, it's probably their fault. Makes the cop's job a lot easier. Our next Reddit post is from Occasional Mermaid. Every summer from May until the end of September, my family, which is me, my husband, and my kid, and two other families, one with two kids and one with no kids, go camping about every other weekend or so. We always have a great time together. We camp close to the river so the kids can swim and the guys can fish. There are small rapids close by that we walk down to and float back to camp during the day. At night we build a bonfire and the adults sit around talking and having a few drinks while the kids pile up in a tent to hang out or go exploring close by with flashlights to see what's out at night. We always put our tents close together but as far away from the rest of the site as possible so we can have some privacy and don't disturb other campers. The campground rules state that quiet time runs from 10pm to 6am. We've been going on these trips for several years and we've never had any problems or issues with other campers or campground staff. Over the past summer we were camping and someone pulled into the campsite next to ours pretty late, maybe 7 or 8 p.m. They set up their tent on part of our site and immediately went into their tent. They had a kayak on their vehicle and we assumed they were going to have an early morning so we didn't say anything about it to them since it was late, dark, and we didn't think it was a big deal. Fast forward to 10.05 p.m. and someone from the front desk comes to our site and tells us they had a noise complaint about our site. The guy said that the staff member making rounds didn't hear us or feel that we were being loud, but since they had someone call up, they had to have someone come talk to us. We apologize for any issues we may have caused, and we agreed to be quieter in case we were disturbing anyone. Maybe half an hour later, the guy comes back and says they had another call, and he asked us if we'd heard any other people because he couldn't hear us until he was on top of us, and maybe the complainer was accusing the wrong site. We kind of look around because we haven't heard anyone else. There's a few other sites with people sitting around fires, but we hadn't heard anyone. However, as I was glancing around, I noticed our next door neighbor peeking out of his tent at us talking to the groundskeeper. When he saw me looking, he quickly ducked back into his tent. His tent is on our site and basically dry humping our tents, which is probably why he could hear us so easily. After the groundskeeper left, I decided to look up the campground rules. There was nothing about lights out, just quiet time. So I took one of our brightest lights, moved it as close as possible to their tent, turned it on, and left it shining like a spotlight on their tent all night long. The next morning when we woke up, our neighbor was gone. We were there for five more days with absolutely no issues. Down in the comments, we have this story from Lilu Pipu. I had someone do this to my boyfriend and I camping once. Except they parked their kid's tent practically touching our tent and then they put the adult tent on the far side of the campsite. They had three kids who were about 5 to 10 years old. I just walked up to the mom, made a bit of friendly small talk and said, I think that you might want to move your kid's tent to a different location depending on how comfortable you are with them hearing our night noises. Accompanied by a wink, they quickly moved their kid's tent. Our next Reddit post is from Jake Swivel. I was working at Blockbuster circa 2003. When customers check out, there are two things you're supposed to do. One, read the titles of the movie and give the due dates. And two, tell people to have a nice day or night after handing them their movies on the other side of the security gate. So a guy comes in with his two kids on a busy Friday night. 
He has a few children's titles and a softcore adult video. I ring up the videos and tell him the due dates of the kids' movies and I say, the other one is due on day such and such, trying to save him a little embarrassment. I walk over to the security gate to hand him the videos where I'm planning on telling him to have a good night, but he's still at the register. Confused, I look at him and he says, aren't you forgetting something? I think through the blockbuster process and I can't come up with anything. He has this indignant look on his face and he says, you're supposed to tell me to have a good night. I'm pretty stunned that a grown man is so reliant on the well wishes of an 18 year old, especially since I would have given him what he so desperately needed if he had just walked over to the security gate. So I say, sir, I'm so sorry. Have a great night. I hope you enjoy your copy of I look down at his VHS tape, then look at everyone behind him in line and raise my voice and say, married people, single sex. He looks bright red and the lady behind him covers her face. I sort of feel bad for his kids getting caught in the crossfire, but there are always casualties in war. Our next Reddit post is from Grunts and More. So this happened way back in 2013. I was living in a large space with five roommates. One of my roommates was known for stealing food, including expensive stuff like meat, but never replacing it. Well, one day, I knew that his mother was coming to visit and stay a few days, and that his mom absolutely loved horses. So, what I decided to do was bait this roommate with horse meat. Horse meat isn't common in the US, but it is legal to buy imported horse meat. So, I acquired some nice thin cuts of horse meat, sliced them up, salted them, and left them in a Tupperware container in the fridge. I stored the rest of the package with the horse meat label in the freezer. Well, sure enough, that evening, I noticed some of the horse meat was gone, so I made a big deal about someone stealing some of my horse meat in front of his mom. He goes, haha, very funny, sure it's horse meat. And my roommate owned up to borrowing some meat that he used to make steak and eggs for him and his mom for breakfast, and he lied, saying he would replace it. That's when I pull out the package from the freezer and prove that it was, in fact, horse meat. And his mom burst into tears, crying to her son, How could you feed me horse? My roommate definitely stopped borrowing my meat after that. OP, you traumatized that poor woman just to get back at her son. How is this petty revenge? This is stone cold pro revenge. Man, sometimes pro revenge and petty revenge stories can be so inconsistent because I'll read a pro revenge story and they're like, he was mean to me, so I made his socks wet and he had to walk around in wet socks for a day. <laughs> and then I read petty revenge stories where it's like, I destroyed relationship between mother and child because he stole my hamburger once. Our next Reddit post is from Alley 30 May. I'm a 30 year old woman and when I was 16, I worked for my dad as a sales rep. When I was 17, my 18-year-old friends booked a holiday to Spain, but my dad wouldn't let me go because I was underage. Being 17 and disgruntled, I handed in my notice and applied to one of my dad's competitors. I got the job based on my experience and the previous accounts I had at my dad's company. It was a bold move and a big F you to my dad. After about three weeks of working there, my dad noticed and he was really pissed off, but later he found it funny. The whole family would make jokes about it, and they still do. It did cause some tension sometimes, because we would try to steal each other's customers, lol. We always made up though, we were very close. Over the years, I've been promoted a bunch of times, and I now run the biggest branch in the country. I got a call this morning that the regional manager is retiring next year, and I'm up for promotion, so it's mine if I want it. That position is where the money gets a bit insane. I'll also be the first female and the youngest ever regional manager this company has ever had. I'm proud of myself and I have three kids. I had my first child at 19 and I've worked my butt off. My dad was really proud of me in the end. He passed away a few years ago, but he always joked that he was right to make me miss that holiday because I wouldn't have left his company and worked as hard as I did. He was 100% correct. This is actually pretty similar to how I got started in my career. And I've told this story once or twice on my channel, so I'll try to keep it brief. But basically, like five, six years ago, I thought that Overwatch, which was going to be coming out, looked like the coolest game ever, and I really wanted to play it. I knew that the developer was giving out beta keys to people who were like making videos about Overwatch. So I was like, okay, I can do this. All I have to do is start a YouTube channel, post some videos, and then once they see that I'm like posting Overwatch content, they'll give me a key, then I'll just stop posting videos and I can play the game all the time. 
And long story short, I never got a beta key. I would post video after video after video, and they would send beta keys to other YouTubers, but they would never send one to me, and I could never figure out why. And yeah, it was really demotivating and really disappointing because I worked really hard on those videos and I thought, hey, what's the deal? How come they're getting beta keys, but I'm not? It doesn't really make any sense. In fact, there were scenarios where smaller YouTubers were getting beta access, but I wasn't. But honestly, the more this happened, the angrier I got. And the angrier I got, the more motivated I became to make better videos. So I started being a YouTuber because I wanted to play a video game. But the thing that kept driving me to be better and put out better videos was just pure anger. I was just angry at the company that they weren't giving me a beta key, so I never gave up. And eventually along the way, like I discovered that I liked making videos and that eventually turned into a career. So <laughs> I'm with you, OP. Sometimes anger can be a really powerful motivator. That was our slash petty revenge. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.